Hey everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. I'm Zelda Master and wow, it's hot in here. Come on, let's not stand around wasting time. Find that element so we can get out of here. Like, I can get out now if it's really that hot. Your freaking hat, don't complain. You're making my head hotter just by being on it. Jeez, Ezlo. Just think about someone else for once. All right. I'm going to stop hating on him, but yeah, okay, in this episode we're going to be taking on this uh, fiery mines, the Cave of Flames, rather. So let's get started. In these pots, there are a bunch of uh, hearts. I believe if you literally exit the room and come right back into it, I'm going to ignore those enemies real quickly, they will reappear. Yeah, so you're you know, going to be able to replenish your health really easily just in the very first room of this place. But we want to head over here, uh, and... Uh, these bob like enemies, they literally are exactly like bob -omb. You hit them, they set off. Well, normally in like Mario, they set off as soon as they see you, I believe. But regardless, they will start running around really fast and you want to avoid them. And uh, yeah, you can use them as a bomb if you wanted. If you didn't, you didn't, like, didn't want to use one of your bombs to open up that cracked wall. But instead, I decide to use one of my bombs because I can hold up to 30, so I don't care. So anyways... You want to make a dent in their thorny armor. Flip them over. Alright, so we have to flip them over and to do so... Oh, jeez. We're gonna have to throw a bomb at them. Like this. And it usually should knock them back. So we're able to uh, actually hit them. But it seems that I'm having a little trouble here. Are you... Okay. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and turn them back. Take out our shield right now and see if we can get him to ram into us. Come on! Are you for real? Right, so these enemies aren't my cup of tea, as you can tell. Just gonna have him stand right there. Come on, come on, come on! Woo! And he died, because he also got hit by the damage the bomb had to offer. So, are you for real, man? I'm gonna lose so much HP just to this one dude. Okay, and there we go. Let's go ahead and hit him. And we're done. And a chest appears for our wonderful efforts. Inside, we should be the compass. Yeah, freaking compass, whatever. I actually like the compass. I hit the dungeon map, though, because... Yeah, it's pretty useless. <laughs> Anywho, let's go ahead and uh, head into this room and oh, some rupees. Why are they out there like that? Well, one of them is a bait. It's a like like. Let's kill it as fast as we can because if it does suck us up, it will sit and suck our rupees and I don't want that to happen. So yeah, um, but I could head back to the first room and pick up some hearts if I needed. I think this pot will drop one. Yep. Okay, we're good. We don't have to worry about that. Anyways, let's go ahead and continue on now. This cave is pretty darn hot, and it's a mine at the same time, so... It's, uh, it's packed with a bunch of rails, as you can tell, and we're gonna be using it quite a bit to our advantage, which is actually really cool. I like this whole concept. This is a really cool temple, to say the least. Anywho, let's go ahead and make our way all the way over here. And when we do, we should find a cart. So this must be what humans... This must be what the humans who built the mines used to get around here. Maybe we should hop in. Uh, well, after all, you don't expect me to believe you're scared. There's nothing to be afraid of here. Shut up. You're the one who'd be scared, man. Let's go. <laughs> Look at... Link is freaking scared, actually. <laughs> and it sits and repeats the, the yell he does. Like the scream. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Because they couldn't have one really long, so they sat and had, a, had it repeat. I guess that's what I would do. No, I would scream for a really long period of time if, you know, I was on some kind of ride that was that fast. But I don't want to jump on the cart again. I want to pick up that rupee because I couldn't help but leave it. Uh, anyways, we got ourselves some bombs, so not bad. I'm going to ignore the... Actually, you know what? <laughs> okay, well, I guess not. I was hoping I'd be able to have one explode into the wall. It's whatever. We're getting so many bombs just from the loot the enemy drops. That's not bad. Anyways, in this room, we want to kill these foes. It's actually really important that we do. So let's go ahead and kill them. They so funny. They look so fierce with their small armor and then the second without it, <laughs> they're like so scared. And here's the thing. The sprite doesn't necessarily change. It's just like that small plate of armor that's on their face, like the beak. Um makes their eyes look like they're mad. But then you actually see it and you see it's big eyes. They're like open up super wide. Anywho, so how interesting. So there's a portal hidden away here. Okay, nice. And with that, we can easily shrink and head inside these small little holes you've seen. I believe we've seen several of them throughout this place that I've been avoiding. So this is a new uh, small shrine we can use. I'm gonna go ahead and show off its little cutscene. See, we're gonna be bounce. Okay, there was no cutscene that we could have saw to bounce on. Well, that sucks. 
I was actually curious to what it would be, but whatever game, you don't want to show it off? Okay, I'll take it. Anywho, let's go ahead and make our way over here, and uh, in this small hole, we should uh, be able to continue. Here's a piece of heart that we cannot pick up in our little baby miniature form, so we're going to have to remember this place and come back somehow. But, by making our way over here, we are in this room, and uh, sadly, we can't go down those stairs because we're really small. But we can jump ridiculous heights as a little minish. So, can't go down stairs, but you can jump really high. <laughs> so, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense, but I'm just going to roll with it. Anyways, the, the fire you can easily put out with your sword, and I'm going to be doing that because I hate fire. I believe they can also drop hearts, so I like that. And in here, we should pick up the dungeon map, so... Hey, boohoo, it stinks, I don't care. Just keep going. Man, I don't want to deal with dungeon maps. These platforms here will fall as soon as you step on them, but uh, they come back, so don't worry. I actually need to do that, though, so I can continue. And yeah, so oh my, it looks like really, really hot in the lava. It looks really, really hot in the lava. Trust me, falling in that would be a bad idea. I'm sure you'll agree. If you do fall, you just respawn on the nearest platform you were actually on. Not these platforms, but actual platforms that don't fall. So keep that in mind. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's quickly run because I don't want to wait for that to respawn. But there we go. We were able to pass the bubbly lava. We got nice fog on the screen. Cool visual effects, Nintendo. May I say. <laughs> And here, these enemies turn into a small ball every time you hit them. And by doing that, if I can actually hit them like this, we'll be able to throw them and make small walkways. Just like the boulders we did earlier while scaling the mountain. And we need to do that to advance, so let's keep hitting this until it falls into that. And there we go. Just like that, we're able to continue on. So, now what we want to do is make our way over here and continue. So, yeah, we have to be careful. That we don't fall into the lava. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to go, nope, not go that way, but go all around like this to uh, head up. It's weird how it works when gliding, because I don't know how fast you're actually going down into the ground, or into the lava rather, but it's at a certain speed, so you want to do it as fast as you can. Don't mess around while you're gliding, because you might screw up and end up falling in the lava, so yeah. But here we got a small key. Obviously, you can always jump in another one of those vortexes to uh, reset your time. That you're, like you'll be back in the air, you'll like take flight again and be really high. So yeah, we made it all this way just to pick up a key, and this key will allow us to open up a door that was locked that I kind of avoided, and that's that uh, where the basically where the minecart was first at. So it's right over here. Go ahead and open it real quick and just continue on. Nothing too major so far going on, and by hitting this switch, it will change the uh, location, I believe, where the... Ch it will, yeah, I believe it's going to go a different path now, so it should go up. Yep, it does. And with that, we pass by the piece of heart again. No, and we can't go back because those doors only open by um, whoever hits it, with, or rather, the, the minecart has to go past it so the door can open, so that's a problem. But... Gotta keep your eyes peeled, because didn't you see that cracked wall? Well, this is the other side of the cracked wall, so just by placing a bomb like this, we'll be able to pick up that piece of heart. And I believe, yeah, this is the only piece of heart within this temple, so don't worry, we're done. We don't have to worry about collecting any more pieces of heart or anything. So we're kind of good when it comes to collecting things within this temple, which is sweet. But anyways, with that done, we can continue on, my friends. Uh, I'm gonna head up here now. Keep rolling with it. I'm literally like just playing this off of the top of my head. I think I think top down Zelda games have always been so much easier than other ones just because the content is a lot more limited. Because you know it's usually on a handheld console, not a home console, so they're unable to do as much. And it's just generally easy, easier to solve puzzles. Like uh, my link to the uh, yeah, not link to the past. Well, link to the past was a childhood game, but. My Link Between Worlds walkthrough, when it first came out, I literally just kept playing it until... Okay, this is getting annoying. Let's just go ahead and do this. Just die. No, you just die. Here, come here. Nice. <laughs> Are you for real? Hey! Take it! And you, take it! There we go. A chest also is going to appear with a really valuable item, but back to what I was saying. 
my A Link Between Worlds Let's Play walkthrough, whatever, was actually literally all figured out from scratch. Um, but that wasn't hard at all. It was so easy. And Skyred Sword, I believe I had to like look up a couple goddess cubes and that was it. But other than that, I beat it from scratch. And I really like that. I like giving you guys my take on the Let's Play and how I 100%. It's normally going to be like any guide, but because, you know, all guides do it as, you know, as convenient as you can. Like the certain collectibles and things. But, um, I don't know. I think it's cool just to look at it, like, because this is the way I beat the game and how I did it. But in reality, it'll most likely be really similar. But, okay, so we got the cane of, uh, I don't know what, to, I don't know how to pronounce it. Pack guy, whatever. We, we got a cane. This cane is gonna let us uh, flip things like that, just upside down as well as make uh, small things launch us up in the air. And uh, you'll see in a second, if we go ahead and put it in one of these holes and then step in it, we'll be able to roll up like Sonic into a ball and yeah, fly up like that. This blue portal will take us to the beginning of the temple, but we, we don't need to do that. What I want to do is jump into this minecart. We were able to flip it um, with the cane, of course. And yeah, that's basically the main item of this uh, temple. And it's going to help us solve all the puzzles pretty much from here on out. So yeah, keep that in mind. It's not really that hard to figure out with this cane. It's actually a really cool cane. You can flip things upside down and stuff. Not everything, but you know, all the platforms and other type things you have to interact with you'll most likely need to use the cane so just keep that in mind as well as these this will let you launch really high up into the air instead of just jump immediately out of it but with that key we got we were able to backtrack here and open up this door and just keep chucking through this place um that portal i believe acts like a midpoint to the temple which is cool so if you're not you know willing to take on the rest then you can take a little break but in reality pfft, I mean, who needs a break man I don't. <laughs> but yeah, as you saw, I turned into a Minish, and I'm just going to pass all of these. These are similar to the Blade Traps we saw earlier, but they are not activated unless there is presence near it and, you know, one that I guess it could register. So you have to be big. You can't be this little ant and expect it to know you're there like we were. So now it knows we're here, and it's going to try to attack us. So we just have to try to avoid it, which is pretty easy. These also pick up momentum as they go forward but it's all good. So there we go, we we're able to head back here. We got a cart now. Now that we do have a cart, we're we can just continue on like this. So wee! Not bad. All right, now what I wanna do is hit all of these. We have to push them towards the end of this. So yeah, this is interesting. We're literally gonna go ahead and pick up all of these enemies and make a walkway. And once they fall into the hole, they won't come back up, which is good. So th that is actually super important um, because if they did come back up, that'd be a problem. But here there was a switch, and this switch will allow us to do something. But we can't pull it up. Yeah, your link's face turns red regardless of what you're pulling, I guess. But um, yeah, we can't activate the switch unless it's on our level. And right here it should be. I pushed it one too high. There we go. Let's hit it and just advance. So. So far, it's so good. It's honestly super straightforward once you do get the cane, so it makes it really simple. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead and make our way over here. Head up, pick up this. We got ourselves another kinstone piece. You'll notice another chest. You're like, can you get that? A uh, little, I kind of want it. Whoa, slow mo. Okay, that slow-mo jump was epic and all, but back to reality where things go at normal speed. And um, here, we're gonna get ourselves another kinstone piece. So yeah, there you go. You just have to jump down from that ledge and you're able to move this like so and continue on. So wasn't too much. Anyways, here's the final stretch of the temple. The boss door is right there, but we need the boss key, so. Yeah, guys, uh, we're gonna have to traverse throughout this. So here we go. This is gonna be gnarly. Uh, first thing we want to do is step on this to create a portal that will take us back if we so desire. Let's say we die or something bad happens. Well, now we have access to the beginning of the temple. It will take us straight to this room. So that's sweet and all, but we need to get that boss key. So let's uh, let's get to that. Let's quickly hit this. Jump on this wait for it to make it over here and I quickly head on this one no I fell into the lava like an idiot oh well 
Let's do it again, I guess. And also, yeah, they they do that again. Um, like they flip back upside down if they do have to, uh, if they do sink in the lava. But here, we can do this here. Just keep going. Uh, hopefully we can make it before this sinks. Ah, okay, we're good. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and break these pots on the other side. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we're gonna have a limited amount of time to make it over here, just like that. And we have to do it on this one as well. And on this one, quickly run. Oh, oh, why'd I do that? All right, not bad, not bad, not bad. Just quickly. No! God dang it! Why did I screw that up, man? I don't know why I did that. I, I flipped the one that didn't have spikes on it to have spikes on it for some gosh dang reason. But there you go. We have it now. As long as we play this cool and not screw things up, we'll be able to make it to the end. There we go. We have done it, everybody. And up here, we'll be able to jump down like this. And there is a chest all the way over here that we don't want to forget. So let's quickly pick that up. Uh, you can easily go through the blade traps when you get hit. It gives you that small incivil invincibility frame. Can't speak. <laughs> but yeah. So I, I, I rock with it. I don't really try to actually wait. Who cares? Why would I wait? But with that, we're able to jump down here. Let's use the cane again to jump through this. And just continue. We're almost done with this temple, surprisingly. It's actually pretty lengthy for a, a, a second temple and being a over-the-top type Zelda game, you know, like a console. I don't know. I tend to, like, just expect a lot less from these types of games because, you know, they are for handhelds. And I don't know. I just don't expect them to be as long. But they do have a lot of content, to say the least. So I find that really cool. But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and make our way over here, like this. Quickly refresh our um, thing. I want to make my way over here, though, to pick up this chest. But we refresh our in, in mid-air flight, I guess. <laughs> and here we got a bunch of rupees, so so worth it, my friends. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my way over here. It's a good thing we picked up that chest. It's easily avoidable. I'm sure a lot of you guys might not think, oh, I can just easily head to it like this. But you can. So. Anyways, here is a rather long section being over the lava. You're gonna have to constantly jump into these vortexes, avoiding falling into the hot and treacherous lava. And we want to make a quick pit stop here so we can pick up this chest as well, which will give us another kinstone. Yeah, temples have a lot of them, and that's why you kind of want to grab them all because. Just backtracking to any temple for any sort of reason is never fun. I, that's my opinion, at least. But there we go. We have done it, everybody. Right up ahead here is the chest that will give us the big key. And now we can take on the big bad boy of them all, the boss. So let's go ahead and get ready to flip this, stamp on it, run, and we're done. Let's enter this. And not rhyme. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and use my cane just to flip all of these. I'll look at all these hearts and a fairy, but we do have a fairy bottle with us. So, let's jump into this. Ah! Oh no, guys! This is. The boss, my friends. The boss of the Cave of Flames. Alright, let's get started. So, this is a super duper simple boss. It just has a ridiculous amount of HP. What you do is you flip a shell on the back uh, with your cane, and then it will fall on its little crystal thing, and then, yeah, it will kind of like faint, or not necessarily faint, but fall unconscious for a little bit, and then you're just able to whack it on its gem. And you want to quickly run off of it, obviously, as you saw before it jumps back into the lava. And here we got some rocks falling from the ceiling, while the lava makes this a lot harder to maneuver around, but generally it's easy. While his shell is still hot, like pipe and red, you can't flip it upside down, so yeah. Oh yeah, also we, we got hit in the butt, so it's going to run extremely fast, and that's not fun. So just jump into the lava, you won't lose another quarter heart, but it's usually worth it if you want to stop running like a maniac like that. But there we go, we're able to do it again, dish out a lot of damage. How this works is you want to, like, when he comes back up to the surface, you want to make sure you're standing on an area that's already filled with lava, because he's going to shoot so much flames at that area 
and it's going to be hard to actually hit him with the cane if uh, there's a bunch of lava. So I'm going to stand here because I'm not going to deal with this area. So let's have him fill it up. All right. He's going to do it. Look at that. Yep. And he's going to do it here as well. Quickly hit him if I can. Oh, man. He's, he's going pretty fast. All right. There we go. Now I can run up easily and dish out some more damage. So keep spamming B. Woo! And we did it. Wow. That was extremely freaking easy. And since the game doesn't want to show you or give you the chance because maybe you have only had one heart left to run back to the safe part, it teleports you there right after the battle. And with that, we are done. So Link's going to run up forward and pick up the next element. <gasps> and it's pretty much the Goron symbol here. It looks really similar to it. Or like the, you know, the thing that's on the Goron sword. The Goron sword's like my favorite sword of all time, so I really like the symbol. It's like three. Instead of doing the piece with two fingers, do it three. Next time you see somebody, do that. Do like Begoron. <laughs> you just have your three fingers. I actually have it right now. Like freaking retarded. That was a fire element, everybody. Um... And yeah, we're done. Also, I noticed while picking up the piece of heart within this area, we got ourselves another heart container, so that was pretty rad. So this is gonna be our seventh, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, and now it should be, if we click, okay, seven. Yeah, awesome, man. This green portal will take us outside of the temple, and that will do it for this episode. So, oh, that was hot. It was so hot, I thought my fibers would catch fire. Ah. Uh, but it's over now. I suppose we go back and speak with Malari. Will do in the next one, though. So thank you all so much for watching this episode of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. I've been Zelda Master, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.